In this video, I'm going to be talking about casting using 3D printed forms. I'm using PLA here. So I've got two different intake manifolds that are different. One of them's for the front, one of them's for the back. So these pieces right here are removable and replaceable. That makes it a lot easier to print. I'm going to go through what I've got set up here. So what I'm going to do is have these two pieces sitting on top of this runner and then I'll have a vertical here somehow and probably I want it about that high. I threw some stuff in here just to kind of give me some options. Then I'm going to have a couple of risers here to attach to these guys and then I'll have a pouring basin and then top of this thing that'll sit like this and that's where the aluminum will go in. So while I'm doing this, I'm going to start putting everything together. I can talk about why I made these choices. So these are PLA with 5% infill because I don't really feel like there's any use in wasting PLA. You need as little as you can get away with because you don't want to, you know, print more than you need to. You don't want to waste it and you don't want to have to melt more out than you need to. So there are a number of different ways of joining these. I have done in the past double stick tape. I've taped around the outside. I've dipped these things in hot wax and then stuck them together. And that was really nice because it gave me a very nice external surface. So on things like this, sometimes in some of my previous ones, I had lots of lines from the Z layering. I have chosen a different meshing strategy in these. So it seems to give me a whole lot less Z lines. I'm hoping it's going to work well. In this particular case, I am just going to use a soldering iron to weld these together. That's always worked well for me in the past. And I'm probably just going to sit here and talk to you guys while I go ahead and start doing my soldering. Because this really does work very quickly and pretty well. So... I have got a couple of risers sitting on top of these pieces because what the risers do, they've got four different jobs. One, they let the air out when the aluminum comes in. Two, when I'm burning this whole thing out, this is where the PLA pours out of to come out of the mold so that I don't have a whole bunch of junk down in the mold. Um, well, okay, so I don't have any PLA caught in the mold. Three, I designed this so that the aluminum goes in, comes through these guys, and then comes up through the molds themselves. There are a couple reasons for that, and I'm going to talk about that. But one of the reasons is so that any crap that you have down here in the mold, like if it's a green sand mold, you're going to have sand all over the place. And if it's, in this case, an investment cast mold, maybe there's some little tiny bits of investment that have broken off and I don't know, you know, just whatever. It'll get floated to the top of these. So that's really nice. Um, that way they're not down in your, uh, in your casting. And the fourth reason, which is actually the most important reason and dictates some of the design of this guy right here is that this sitting on top of this, as this fills up with aluminum, this is going to fill up with aluminum this cools down and begins to freeze, this is still molten because this is larger in cross-section than this. I designed it that way on purpose. So this guy is going to stay hot for longer than this guy is. So this guy stays hot, this guy cools down and sucks aluminum from this guy, pulls down into this. There are two different things going on here. One, you want the cross-section to be wider than the cross-section that's on here. Two, you want the height of this to be such that as the aluminum pulls down into this, it won't pull all the way down far enough so that you get a casting flaw in this guy. So you want this fairly high. Actually, you probably want it considerably higher than this. I threw this together. We're going to see how it works. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But that's what I'm going to try. So while I'm on talking about PLA, you can also use wax. There are a number of different places out there that sell wax filament. I have used wax filament. Wax filament does in fact work. I found it fairly difficult to get the wax to stick 
well to the bed and I found it fairly difficult to get it to print without peeling and curling while it was peeling I mean while it was printing so I kind of decided you know this sucks it's easy enough to I mean PLA prints so well right so I just went ahead with PLA and the PLA burns out so nicely that I didn't really feel like I needed to bother with the wax you may be a bit different if you have different results I would love to know about it I'd love to know that you like wax for some reason and why you like it because that would just be useful to, to hear about so in the process of talking about how all this goes together I did mention that these drain out the PLA as the whole works is heating up I read when I was first starting this that you can do what I guess I'm going to call a hot pour where you take PLA and cast in an investment and then just pour the hot aluminum right in on top of it and the PLA just burns out and it's magic I tried this it was a disaster because the PLA even though it's just five percent infill was down there in the hole bubbling and boiling and shooting aluminum out of the top of the mold it was like an aluminum volcano I really recommend against doing that burn it out the way that you would or do a green sand mold where you completely remove the PLA and you get to reuse it which is even better so that's the trade-off there I don't even think it's a trade-off don't try hot casting PLA the hot burnout of PLA I think it's a terrible idea so again I am building this so that the aluminum pours down here comes in here and fills these two guys up from the bottom one of the reasons I'm doing that is because it gets the debris out of the top the other reason I'm doing that is because as soon as you heat up aluminum it's going to have an oxide layer on it. you don't even have to heat it up aluminum always has an oxide layer on it and that aluminum oxide layer doesn't melt you can't get the aluminum hot enough to melt that so it's always in there so one of the results of that is that you've got something that's kind of like a balloon that's got full of hot aluminum and around it it's got this oxide layer and you really don't want to have layers of oxide all crunched in against each other so if I were to pour this in from the top in through one of these risers some of the aluminum would go here some would go over here and you know you'd have all these layers of aluminum all in on top of each other and they're mostly going to melt together but it's still kind of going to be like you've got all this jello and a whole bunch of rubber gloves and you're pushing the fingers down and all these little bits and pieces and when you get finished you've got all these layers of aluminum and aluminum oxide aluminum it doesn't make the world's greatest casting I don't really think you should do that so the way that I do this which is the traditional way that people have always done is I pour the aluminum in from the bottom it rises up through the mold itself and the result is it's almost like blowing a balloon full of aluminum up into this thing so there's one continuous layer of aluminum throughout the entire casting and that gives you really good castings consequently this is one of the reasons that I recommend people don't use like um, aluminum pop cans for casting because or machining chips because they're all of these little tiny pieces of aluminum that have aluminum oxide layers on the outside so when you pour them in no matter how hard you work on welding I mean not welding on melting them no matter how much you stir it there's still gonna be all this aluminum oxide little bags of junk down in the crucible I think that's a terrible idea personally so I'm recommending you use big chunks of aluminum as your casting material this last joint is going to be a little bit difficult and I'm going to kind of have to pick it up and move it around so I'm going to do that later but in the meantime I'm going to show you what I use for my raw casting material instead of pop cans this is an aluminum engine head from a Subaru it is a big chunk of solid aluminum it does really great for casting material because it's a high silicon alloy it has a low surface area to volume and this is what it was intended for is casting aluminum I got this for free because I go to a local um, small mechanic who doesn't have enough material to justify having an aluminum recycler so he just throws these away he puts them out back and some scrapper shows up and takes them so you know I went down there and say hey do you have any 
broken engine heads. And he's like, yeah. So I cut this one in half because I was kind of curious about what water jacket looks like and how thick the area over top of the head itself is. So this is all water jacket in here. Um, I wanted to see how thick this was in case I ever decide, hey, I'm going to go cast myself a head. So I cut this in half and now I can use it at some point for casting movement. There are some issues with this. These are big chunks of steel. These are hardened steel valve seats that are pressed in here. I don't know if I still have any pieces. Oh yeah, here's a piece of steel. So this is the oil line for lubricating the camshaft, which sits in here. And the oil line I cut right through this has a steel plug in it because they drilled the oil lines after they did the casting. So all of those have to come out. But honestly, when you melt this thing, they're gonna sink down to the bottom. So if you've got a little bit of extra aluminum, you're gonna have the steel down on the bottom and just don't pour it. Or since this is probably too big to fit in my crucible, one of the nice things about aluminum is that it has a characteristic called hot shortness. You take the aluminum, you heat it up some, and when it just begins to weep a little tiny bit of magnesium and zinc out the sides, the sides will go all kind of weird and silvery and little bits of um, metal will bead up on the surface. You can smack it a couple times with a hammer and it'll break into several pieces and then you can just fish all the steel out. So I recommend finding old scrap aluminum from cars rather than old scrap aluminum from cans as your casting material. So now I will go ahead and finish this up and then the next video I will make is going to be what you do to get this whole thing invested and ready for burnout.